One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi power plant has released more video of employees in the heat of the nuclear crisis. Tokyo Electric Power Company posted footage online of its teleconferences in the days after the accident last year. The pictures highlight the uncertainty caused by company executives and government officials. TEPCO released six hours of video. It was recorded over five days starting March 11th. The footage shows people at the plant, an off-site center, the firm's head office in Tokyo, and other branch offices. One section shows the plant chief was unable to communicate with government officials. <laughs> Another part shows the confusion over how to open a valve and lower the pressure inside a reactor. TEPCO officials say they plan to release more video recorded in the month after the accident. Officials at Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority have participated in their first emergency drill since the agency's launch three weeks ago. The Friday drill simulated the power blackout at the nuclear fuel reprocessing plant in Lokkasho in Aomori Prefecture. A self-defense force plane flew an NRA commissioner and members of its staff to the site. During the drill, the NRA official used the plant's emergency response center to communicate by video link with the agency's headquarters in Tokyo. He rehearsed measures to evacuate residents and ensure their safety. Last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi exposed serious communication flaws between the government, the plant's personnel, and the operator's headquarters. This led to serious delays in the evacuation of local residents. The people at Japan's new nuclear watchdog are putting lessons learned from the Fukushima Daiichi disaster into practice. Members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority want to expand evacuation zones around the nuclear plants. And they say residents should be armed with iodine tablets to protect against radiation exposure. NRA officials released a draft of new guidelines for dealing with nuclear disasters. They're recommending evacuation zones around facilities expand from the current 10 kilometers to 30. The new guidelines would cover more municipalities from the current 45 and 15 prefectures to 135 in 21 prefectures. The draft says municipal authorities should revise their emergency response plans by next March. It also includes proposals such as instructing residents to stay indoors during nuclear disasters, and it says iodine tablets should be distributed to people who live within 50 kilometers of a nuclear plant. Iodine can prevent thyroid damage resulting from airborne radiation exposure, but the tablets can have side effects, so the new guidelines call for authorities to explain the risks before distribution. They also say that maximum distance between nuclear plants and their emergency response centers should be increased from the current 20 kilometers to 30. They would prohibit locating these off-site buildings within 5 kilometers of facilities. The Fukushima Daiichi response center was that close to the plant. High radiation levels for staff to evacuate. Japan's industry minister says the government will not allow a power company to start building a nuclear plant in western Japan. The decision comes three weeks after the government allowed work to resume on two plants already under construction. Yukio Edano referred to plans by Chugoku Electric Power Company to build a facility in Yamaguchi Prefecture. He said the government's new energy policy rules out the construction of nuclear plants. Government leaders adopted the policy last month. They said they would try to end the reliance on nuclear power by the 2030s. All reactors in the country went offline one by one after the accident in Fukushima. Two at the Oe plant in western Japan are running again. Edano said other reactors could be restarted if the regulator confirms they're safe. <laughs> I'm just think funny things. <laughs>
PG&E's planned ocean explosions is creating a lot of concern for marine mammals. John? It's planned for a 40-mile stretch of the ocean centered on the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. From about here, San Simeon, down to south of Pismo Beach, and out about a dozen miles, beginning next month. 12 days of blasting the water here every 15 seconds with super loud sound. As I first told you 17 months ago, the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant could be at risk from unknown undersea earthquake faults. The state called for this study and we're absolutely committed to working with the community and the environment. A ship would tow an air gun array. Bursts of 250 decibel sound penetrate the ocean floor. Echoes reveal faults, but the sound can also hurt marine mammals. We'll have trained species observers. We'll have safe mammal protection zones. Federal agencies say there'll be only temporary effects on marine life. But I've obtained this state environmental impact report. It says that there'll be significant and unavoidable harm to perhaps hundreds of marine mammals. We've seen beachings of uh, marine mammals around the world following uh, large noises and acoustic testing in the oceans. Environmentalists say the state used better and more recent science, that there are also better, less risky methods to explore those faults. You could get more reliable data on the safety of the plant by going at it another way than blasting the ocean. Public comment period on this project is open for the next three weeks. Reporting live, Health and Science Editor John Fowler, KTVU Channel 2 News. Scientists the world over have long been in pursuit of the origins of life. Some from Japan have found answers in a petri dish. They used multi-purpose stem cells to generate female reproductive cells. Then they produced mice. Researchers at Kyoto University took the cells of female mice to generate induced pluripotent stem cells or iPS cells. They applied a protein to them to develop what are called germ cells. The researchers transplanted the germ cells into ovaries. They succeeded in generating reproductive cells or ova. They fertilized the ova with normal sperm. They placed the fertilized eggs in female mice. They waited. Then the mice did what the team had hoped for. They gave birth to normal offspring. We are reproducing the mechanisms of sperm and ova in test tubes. Research on chromosomes has helped identify the cause of infertility. This achievement will improve our chances of finding a cure. The group succeeded last year in generating mouse sperm from iPS cells. Saito says researchers need to be careful about what they do next. He says they need to consider the ethics of creating life. But no one weeps for the mouse, for its life is worth less than zero. Just another cold fact of life on this horrifying planet. The scientists at Tokyo's Keio University are claiming a first of their own. They say they've produced cells that will become sperm and ova, but from ones developed from human skin, not mice. <laughs> Professor Hideyuki Okano found a way to make iPS cells visible when they develop into the germ cells that will become sperm or ova. The scientists say they've confirmed that the germ cells developed in five days. Okano says he hopes their research can be used to develop drugs for treating infertility. There are studies that came out of Belarus after Chernobyl had exploded and had, there was cesium deposition there. And what they found was that anything above 11 becquerels per kilogram, a becquerel is a measurement of radioactivity, so it's one disintegration per second. And so it's a becquerel per kilogram. Anything above about 11 becquerels per kilogram in a child system and you start to see heart problems. You get a little higher than that, you start to see female hormone imbalance, uh, nerve issues, a whole host of, of issues 
that we wouldn't necessarily have associated with radiation in the past. I mean, obviously, genetic deformities, we associate with it. We associate um, cancers. But, and those are all true, but the thing that we, the thing that those don't let us see sometimes are the more subtle yet just as detrimental effects. So the children, the children really need to have um, non-contaminated food. They need to live in non-contaminated areas. And I do not know that the Japanese government is doing that right now. I know that there are people over there who are very concerned and they're trying to get their kids out. An 11-year-old boy has discovered the remains of an exceptionally well-preserved mammoth in Siberia. Experts say this kind of discovery is a once-in-a-century event. The male mammoth was found on the Tamir Peninsula in Siberia. His remains date back to 30,000 years ago. The animal is believed to have died at the age of 15 or 16. Experts say the permafrost left the organs, bones, and flesh in an exceptional state of preservation. The find indicates that mammoths were able to survive harsh winter conditions by storing a massive amount of fat in their humps.